Hi, this is Sang Woo Huang at Microsoft Research. I'm glad to introduce this work, ARC, which has been done since my PhD program at KAIST. Modern AI systems often employ many accelerators. This is because the model size is increasingly getting large, exceeding tens of trillions of model parameters recently. This means that the system needs to run more cooperating accelerators, specifically GPUs, in this work. Therefore, inter-GPU communication has been a key component of AI systems. We discussed the overhead of inter-GPU communication in two aspects. First thing to note is that the data transfer size is small, often as small as only tens of kilobytes. The small data size is mainly due to the model architecture itself, and it becomes even smaller if we use multi-stage collective communication algorithms. The size decreases in a larger scale model because it may need more stages for collecting data, which results in smaller size per transfer. For efficient communication, we need to minimize the control plane overhead for event handling between small data transfers. The event handling here includes signaling the completion of send and launching of follow-up GPU task. For example, if we use CUDA main copy for data copy and CUDA event for event handling, it takes around 80 microseconds of unavoidable event handling delay, which is much longer than the actual transfer time for small data. You can check breakdown of this delay in our paper. The second aspect is overlapping computation and communication, which is common in data parallelism or pipeline parallelism to improve GPU utilization. However, overlapping often incurs substantial slowdown due to interference between computation and communication. The interference occurs because GPU communication libraries such as Nickel use GPU threads for data I.O. Therefore, we need to minimize the data plane overhead from I.O. interference. For example, in our experiments comparing average nickel all reduced throughput during BERT large data parallel training, overlapping computation and communication degrades the all reduced throughput to 54% of the throughput without overlapping. Now we have discussed two aspects of overhead, event handling and I.O. interference. Unfortunately, existing systems tackle only one aspect, but not both. In this work, we classify existing systems into two categories, CPU-controlled or GPU-controlled communication, according to whether communication events are handled by CPU or GPU. This table compares existing systems with this work. CPU-controlled and GPU-controlled communications suffer from either event handling or I.O. interference overhead, while our work tackles both overhead at the same time. Let me compare CPU-controlled and GPU-controlled communication in detail. In CPU-controlled communication, a CPU thread needs to pull an event to know that the data on GPU is ready for sending. Then, the CPU will initiate the DMA engine on the sender GPU by calling CUDA main copy, for example. This will trigger the DMA engine to copy the data to the receiver GPU. This design can minimize I.O. overhead on GPU because it offloads every I.O. operation to the hardware DMA engine. However, it suffers from a long latency from CPU intervention. On the other hand, in GPU controlled communication, such as Nickel, we initially create a memory map to the receiver GPU on the sender GPU's address space. When the data is ready at runtime, GPU threads will copy the data to the memory map, which will move the data to the receiver GPU. This design can achieve a low latency because it bypasses CPU during runtime operations. However, it suffers from substantial I.O. overhead on GPU because it uses GPU threads for data copy. In short, neither approach tackles both latency and I.O. overhead at the same time. To address the problem, we introduce ARC, a GPU-driven system for distributed deep learning. ARC presents two key ideas, GPU-controlled DMA and autonomous GPU execution control. GPU-controlled DMA is a kind of GPU-controlled communication, but the main difference is that it lets GPU threads initiate DMA directly. This design would not only benefit from fast event handling of GPU-controlled communication, but it also minimizes I.O. overhead by offloading I.O. to hardware DMA engines. Autonomous GPU execution control means that GPU runs all tasks without external control signal for both computation and communication. Specifically, it packs all GPU tasks in a single GPU kernel, 
which we name it as a loop kernel. This contributes to fast event handling by running GPU tasks without any external control signal. And this also contributes to efficient computation on GPU because it enables fine-grained software-defined task scheduling. I'm going to explain details in following slides. The idea of GPU control DMA is initiating the DMA engine directly by GPU threads. The left figure shows the existing method using memory map, and the right figure shows our proposal. You can see that GPU threads don't need to copy data anymore. They just send a DMA request to the DMA engine. This can remove the IO overhead on GPU, but unfortunately, this is not supported in commodity GPU hardware because DMA engines on GPU are initiated only by CPU. Since we cannot modify GPU hardware, we present the design of external DMA engines where GPU threads can directly initiate an external DMA engine outside of GPU. For example, our software DMA engine shown in the figure uses a CPU thread that initiates the DMA engine on GPU upon request from GPU threads. Even if its latency is suboptimal, this version still delivers the benefit of GPU side control and IO offloading. We also present a hardware DMA engine prototype with FPGA to show that the external DMA engine design can do much better. This version reduces the latency because it doesn't need to forward the DMA request to the DMA engine on GPU. It also shows much higher throughput than the DMA engine on GPU for small messages because our implementation can conduct multiple DMA copies concurrently. Here are micro benchmark results of our DMA engines. We evaluate one-way latency that includes the, the event handling overhead and throughput given many parallel messages to send. Over the CPU control baseline, our software and hardware engines show 3.5 and 9.1 times lower latency respectively. In terms of throughput, our software engine performs the same as the baseline because both use the same DMA engine on GPU, while our hardware engine shows higher throughput saturating the PCI's press bandwidth even with 8 kilobyte messages. Now we move on to our second design autonomous GPU execution control. The figure shows our GPU-driven system architecture. Like other deep learning frameworks, the input of the system is an operational graph that describes a model architecture. We design an offline sc operator scheduler that analyzes the graph and generates a GPU loop kernel. If we look into the loop kernel over, over the NVIDIA CUDA or AMD RockM, we define all necessary computation operators, such as GEM, and communication operators over our GPU control DMA interface. Finally, all these operators are used to define a deep learning model, which, is, which, which means that this is the only kernel running on the GPU during the entire runtime. And also, uh, this design benefits from uh, GPU control DMA and from fine-grained software-defined task scheduling as well, which enables efficient computation. Since all tasks are declared in a single kernel, we can holistically optimize the computation and communication with global view. Uh, due to time limitation, I'm going to briefly introduce our scheduler, how our scheduler works. Please refer to our paper for details. Virtual CTA is the key abstraction that enables task scheduling in a GPU-driven system. CTA here means Cooperative Thread Array, also known as Thread Block in CUDA. The left figure shows the common practice, that is, a GPU's kernel declares many CTAs, then the GPU hardware will schedule the CTAs into streaming multiprocessors, or SMs. This is done by hardware, so we cannot program the scheduling logic. The right figure shows our approach, a GPU-driven system, where we launch only one CTA per SM and schedule VCTAs to CTAs. A VCTA is a code snippet that corresponds to a CTA's logic from the left figure. So the scheduling can be defined by software, which is basically code generation by appending code snippets. Specifically, when an operator graph is given like the leftmost, leftmost figure, the scheduler disaggregates each operator into VCTAs, like in the, in the middle figure, and then schedules VCTAs to CTAs, like in the rightmost figure. The scheduling logic is similar with bin packing or load balancing logic while honoring the execution orders and data dependency. For example, you can see that we put a barrier across SMs before executing red blocks in the figure. 
This is because the red blocks depend on results from orange and blue blocks, which, which are distributed across different SMs. Finally, based on the scheduling result, the system automatically generates a loop kernel code. The example code here is written in the CMT manner. To declare different tasks for different SMs, we can use if statements to diverse the execution. If SMs run the tasks of the same type, like red and purple blocks in the figure, we can converge the execution and provide different VCTA IDs for different threads. Our paper explains more details of our scheduler and the loop kernel implementation. Here are micro benchmark results of our scheduler on a single GPU. We test in inference throughputs of four different models and compare five different baselines against ARC. The results show that ARC perf performs comparable or better, better than baselines up to 3.5 times faster than TensorRT. We evaluate ARC under various parallelism scenarios. For data parallel training, ARC outperforms the baseline by 2.1 times for BERT large training with eight V100 GPUs and by 1.7 times for GPT-2X large training with 32 A100 GPUs. In the BERT large experiment, we found that 64% of the gain comes from removing the IO, in, in, IO interference between computation and communication. For tensor parallelism, we test four different mixture of expert model inference using two GPUs and one expert per GPU. Overall, ARC outperforms the baseline by up to 2.3 times, and if we evaluate only the communication latency, it is up to 3.3 times faster than the baseline. Finally, we evaluate pipeline parallel training throughput for GPT-3 6.7 billion model, uh, billion model uh, and ARC outperforms the baseline by 1.4 times. In this evaluation, there is little gain from communication because the message size across GPUs is too large, which means that the, the event handling overhead is much smaller than the data copy latency. Therefore, uh, most of the gain here is coming from uh, efficient computation. In this work, we claim that inter-GPU communication needs to tackle the control overhead on CPU and the IO overhead on GPU. As a solution, we present ARC which proposes GPU-controlled DMA and GPU-driven system design. ARC outperforms baseline systems in various distrib distributed deep learning scenarios up to 2.1 times for training and 3.5 times for inference. I'm glad to share with you that ARC is going to be open source shortly. Lastly, we are hiring now. Please contact me offline or through email. Thanks for listening.